So the President Trump, he threatens to defund California schools over a project, and the project is called 1619. So, <clears throat> for those of you that don't know what that is, I'm going to fill you in on that. So, <clears throat> in the previous videos, I had mentioned that President Trump wanted to stop what is where people are trying to do sensitivity training or uh, anti-racist trainings and the federal government was sponsoring or backing some of that. <clears throat> and so he's not for it. And this is yet another situation and it pretty much uh, explains it in uh, verbatim in this article. So this is by Bruce Herring, September 6, 2020. And so here's President Trump. So President Donald Trump won't allow California schools to incorporate a curriculum based on the controversial New York Times 1619 project. So let's listen to what this is. Trump said that Sunday that the Department of Education was investigating allegations that California was incorporating what is called 1619 Project into its lessons. So he threatened to take away schools' fundings if they do. And so the New York Times Magazine series makes no dubious claims, including that the American Revolution was fought to preserve slavery. It claims the date 1619 when slaves first arrived in the colonies as America's true founding. Historians have taken issues with its wilder claims. And so Trump tweeted on Sunday that the Department of Education is looking at this. If so, they will not be funded. He linked to a post that said California had implemented the 1619 program. And so the Times 1619 project won a Pulitzer Prize for commentary. And the Pulitzer Center has since developed a package that allows schools to teach the project lessons. So the GOP Senator Tom Cotton of Arkansas claimed that 1619 Project is a revisionist account of history that denies the noble principles of freedom and equality on which our nation was founded. He has a bill pending that would prevent schools from teaching 1619 Project. And so that's pretty much that situation right there. And so there's a lot of civil unrest and it's not by accident. And you have a protest going on in Rochester, New York of a black man that was died of his asphyxiation by uh, police officers by them placing a bag over his head. And people of this, the the towns of what Rochester, the city of Rochester, New York, are just being made aware of that. As of late, it happened in the earlier parts of March, just before they started the lockdowns. You have uh, civil unrest going on in Portland, Oregon, which we've been seeing. It's like the hundredth night of protests, and then you also see in Kentucky. Uh, by the Kentucky, before the Kentucky Derby, they still have not held the officers accountable of Breonna Taylor's death in her house where she was murdered. And so there's been a multiple to multitudes of protests drawing to all of these racial, um, racially charged and motivated killings that have happened at the hands of corrupt police officers. And so this is, is a national crisis 
that has been going on for many, many years. And we're seeing it in video. We're seeing it in the media because it is a public cry for justice is what's going on. The protesters are being jailed, tortured, attacked, abused. They throw tear gas um, um, balls, uh, rubber balls. They shoot at them, paint balls, uh, rubber balls, I heard, sometimes damaging their eyes. Um, uh, chemicals that are doused, they're doused with so that it can blind them or burn their eyes. So there's a whole lot of things that are going on right now that are showing that there's an actual uh, revolution, a movement going on all around the country and it is drawing attention to this one person who's trying to stop the voices and stifle the voices of people's cry. And so President Trump is threatening to defund the schools. He's made lots of threats to defund schools, to defund, defund sanctuary cities, to um, take away um, certain needed programs. He's even said that he was going to stop unemployment insurance, which many Americans were needing. And that's just going to exacerbate people's situation even more if you haven't noticed that they have started to wind down on the unemployment for many people and they have not given a stimulus check as of yet, which they claim they will, but you have yet to see that coming. And so all of this points to what we've been dealing with for many, many years is systemic racism and the inequalities of, of, of people's incomes. You have some people that are saying, oh no, that's not true. They're just waiting for the next great big entrepreneur to make a bunch of money, but everybody's not making a bunch of money as we see. And so there are a lot of people suffering and then there's people that are dying at the hands of bad actors that are perpetuating these racial overtones and these feelings of hatred that we have, many black Americans have felt for many years and it's felt in different ways. And now we're seeing it where they're doing public lynchings by murdering black citizens on can camera. And so and they're not even shy about what they're doing. And then they have the audacity to hide what they do and wait so that it won't be viewed by the public until late, hoping that you'll forget about it and it'll just go away. And people are tired of it. They're not going to forget about it. It isn't going to go away. And so this president has made a lot of people feel insecure about living here in this country, that their lives are being taken simply because of being the skin color that they are. And not only that, you have poor people that are attacked simply because they can't afford to live certain places and they're rent burdened. And so they're being thrown out of their apartments. These eviction halts are not helping anybody. They're only hurting most Americans. And so without helping both the landlord and the tenant and doing an overhaul and providing um, monetary assistance to the landlord and the tenant, you are only halting the problem that's still going to be a tsunami of evictions. And the smaller landlords are hurting because they're not able to pay their rent. And so <clears throat> this is just a catastrophic event that we are seeing unfolding in this time period of this Trump administration. And so I'm just going to go down here. So this is yet another situation that when you see this, you're going to constantly see protest after protest after protest after protest. People that are gathering because they are tired of all of the madness, and you don't just see black people gathering. You see white people, you see Hispanic people that have been 
tired of seeing these people being mistreated and they know they live in a situation where they don't have a lot of money or resources and they've been marginalized by a system that continues to perpetuate this. So the people have spoken and so I'm going to let this video go. This is not um, this is not isolated incidences, folks. If you see these articles and you see what he's trying to do and you see his position on these issues, this is a war. And it is a, a civil unrest, a civil war that is going on. It was silent and now it is out in the open. And people are speaking out on it and he's trying to jail them and torture and put them in a situation and paint them as the criminals. Yet we have black people dying for whatever reason they can figure out just but to shoot them or kill them or suffocate them or snuff the life out of them and keep them from breathing. We can't breathe is what we've been saying. This has been going on year after year after year. Having said this, thanks for listening.